1 Corinthians 12 in your Bibles. We're looking at a series entitled Mighty Manifestations of the Spirit. And I told you this would take us a while. And as much as as much as I give you in, in these messages, the fact of the matter is I won't be able to give you an extensive detail on this subject because it is a very huge, huge subject. First Corinthians 12, let's look at from verse 1. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Ye know that ye were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols, even as ye were led. Wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaketh by the Spirit of God, uh, calleth Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. Now there are diversities of gifts. I like that phrase, diversities of gifts, or different kinds of gifts. And that's what we have been looking at. There are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. Now, I, well, I would stop there. There are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. We looked at uh, the gift of the Word of Knowledge as I began to look at the Revelation gifts. The Revelation gifts are the gift of the Word of Wisdom, the gift of the Word of Knowledge, and discerning of spirits let me say that again the revelation gifts the revelation gifts are the gift of the word of wisdom the gift of the word of knowledge and discerning of spirits we have looked at the gift of the word of knowledge and i told you that this is supernatural insight into the mind of god regarding the past and the present If you did not listen to this last week, I want to encourage you to go to our website and do so. Today, I want to look at the gift of the word of wisdom. This is supernatural insight into the mind of God regarding the future. Now notice, the gift of the word of knowledge is supernatural insight into the mind of God regarding the past, and the present, but the gift of the word of wisdom, it's a supernatural insight into the mind of God regarding the future. <clears throat> it's important to understand that sometimes when you flow in these gifts, you have two at a time, sometimes three at a time flowing in the ministry or, or through someone's life. Very important. You see, the prophetic ministry flows in this a lot. And sometimes people think that he is prophesying. But in actual fact, it isn't the simple gift of prophecy. You know, somebody who stands in the office of a prophet is different from somebody who prophesies. Very important. Somebody who stands in the office of a prophet is different from somebody who is used in the simple gift of prophecy. Now, a prophet, somebody who is in, a, in that full-time ministry, will operate in the gift of prophecy plus the gift of the word of wisdom, the gift of the word of knowledge, and discerning of spirits. In actual fact, he will constantly have two out of the revelation gifts plus the gift of prophecy, which is a vocal gift. He must have at least two of the revelation gifts and the gift of prophecy constantly flowing through his ministry. Constantly. Constantly. Very important. So sometimes when a prophet begins to speak. People think he's prophesying. There is, there is, how do I say? There is some level of prophecy 
But in actual fact, it is not pure prophecy. It is the gift of the word of knowledge and the gift of the word of wisdom that's in operation. Because in the simple gift of prophecy, you don't know details about people's lives. The simple gift of prophecy is for edification, exhortation, and comfort. Basic, period. It is not information, it's confirmation. But somebody who flows in the gift of the word of knowledge and the gift of the word of wisdom will tell you things about your life. Personal things. Private things. Remember Jesus with the woman at the well? The Samaritan woman? <coughs> when Jesus met her, Jesus said, give me water to drink. She said, why do you, a Jew, ask me, a Samaritan, to give you water? Jews and Samaritans have nothing in common. You know the story. Jesus said, go and call your husband. She said, I have no husband. Jesus said, yeah, you spoke correctly. But you've had five husbands. And the one you are living right now is not your husband. How did Jesus know? How did Jesus know that she has been married several times? And she's now living with a, woman, with a man in, uh, in her house that she was not even married, legally married to. How did he know? The gift of the word of knowledge. Are you seeing that? So he was not prophesying. He was only telling her details of her life. By the gift of the word of knowledge. How did Jesus know Nathanael was sitting under the fig tree before Philip called him? Because Jesus said to Nathanael, an Israelite indeed, in whom there is no guile. How do you know me? Well, before Philip came to call you, when you were sitting under the fig tree, I saw you. How did he see him? By the gift of the word of knowledge. I told you the story of my friend who wanted to go to Greece. We were Bible school students. And we had the same belief. We knew it was wrong to go to Greece illegally. And so we were training for ministry. So we had to live our lives according to the word of God. And my friend came under so much pressure. And he at the time began to change his persu persuasion. He began to change his whole concept of going to Greece. Which was the same thing we understood and we we held daily. And when he began to change his idea of going to Greece, uh, he didn't tell me. He couldn't tell me because he knew if he had told me, <laughs> I wouldn't support that. And so he began to make plans behind my back. I had no idea. His idea was he would get to Greece and then inform me that he has, he has crossed. You know, after the fact. People apologize after they've been caught. But anyways. So I was sitting with him with a couple of friends in the house. And suddenly, I fall into a trance. I fall into what? I fall into a trance. That's what we know as falling into a trance. I fall into a trance that I believe lasted for from one to five seconds. Because you see, in the realm of the spirit, you can see a video. A video of somebody's, somebody's stuff. Just like that. Boom. It's released to you. And you see it in five seconds. And I saw that. Five seconds. About five seconds, I saw it. And I come back to myself. I said to him, I turned, he was sitting beside me. I said, you want to go, you're going to Greece. You're planning to go to Greece. Do not do it. Stay here. The Lord will bless you. You see what happened? I gave, him the, I gave him the word of knowledge. The word of knowledge was knowing he was planning to go to Greece. But the word of wisdom was telling him, stay here. God will bless you. Because the Lord also spoke through me that he was going to bless him. But the young man did not listen to me. And he went ahead and traveled to Greece like he had planned, which God revealed to me. And I don't know, it's been 20 plus years. I've never heard anything from him. Not in ministry. I don't even know if he's alive today. Somebody listening to me. So no, don't forget, I told you that when these gifts manifest, they manifest for the profit of all. These gifts don't manifest to condemn and judge people. No, these gifts manifest to help people. So God was about to help my friend when, I, when he showed me what he was planning to do. And he also gave me the, the gift of the word of wisdom, which is referring to the future. I told him, hey, bro, hey bro <coughs> do not travel. Stay here. The Lord will bless you. What did God say to Isaac? In Genesis 26, don't go to Egypt. Stay where I tell you and I will be with you and I will bless you. So I told him similar. Stay here, God will bless you. And if he had stayed here, 
because I was speaking by the word of wisdom, by the gift of the word of wisdom, God would have blessed him. Because the gift of the word of wisdom is supernatural insight into the mind of God regarding the future. That's what it is. Supernatural insight into the mind of God regarding the future. Now, when I said to him, stay here, God will bless you. There is an, there is an atom of prophecy in that. So that is why some people say, uh, well, it's, it's, it's a prophetic thing. Yes, of course, there is a prophetic um, angle to it. Yes, I, 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 I agree. I believe it. <clears throat> That's a prophetic angle. Praise God. Can someone say amen? Look at Acts chapter 9. Acts chapter 9. We're going to read verses 15, verses 15 and 16. Acts chapter 9. We're speaking on the gift of the word of wisdom. But the Lord said to him, Go, for he is a chosen vessel of mine, to, watch this, to bear my name before Gentiles, kings, and the children of Israel. Now watch what God is doing here. God, right here in Acts 9, was speaking to Ananias. I made reference to Ananias last week. God was speaking to Ananias about Saul. God said to Ananias, go to the street, call straight the gift of the word of knowledge. For there is a man there named Saul, the gift of the word of knowledge. And he prayeth the gift of the word of knowledge. At the time it was happening, God was telling Ananias about Saul. And in his prayer, he has seen a man named Ananias come to him in his vision and laid his hands upon him that he might receive his sight, the gift of the word of knowledge. So Ananias said, Lord, I have heard about this man, how he has been wreaking havoc in the church. Watch what the Lord told Ananias in the vision. <coughs> Watch this. But the Lord said to him, verse 15, go, for he is a chosen vessel of mine, right? To bear my name, the gift of the word of wisdom. That's why I told you that these gifts work together many times. For he is a chosen vessel of mine to bear my name. Now God is revealing the future of Saul to Ananias. To bear my name before kings, before Gentiles, and before the children of Israel. So the future of Saul was being released and revealed to Ananias in a vision. That is the gift of the word of of wisdom that's exactly what I was telling my friend stay here because God will bless you look at verse 16 for I will show him how much how many things he must suffer for my name's sake so Ananias in this vision already saw the future of Saul even the persecution Saul was going to suffer was revealed to Ananias in a vision that is the gift of the word of wisdom. It is divine revelation. It is supernatural revelation. Seeing into the mind of God of what's going to happen in the future. Look at Acts 21. Read, let's read this. Acts 21. Praise God. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit is at work, I'm telling you. <clears throat> the river church is never going to be the same again. As we contend for these gifts, we're going to see mighty manifestations of the Spirit of God. Because the Bible tells us that when these gifts manifest, it's the Holy Ghost that's manifesting. Acts 21, look at verse 8. On the next day, we who were Paul's companions departed and came to Caesarea and entered the house of Philip the Evangelist, who was one of the seven, and stayed with him. Now this man, Philip, had four virgin daughters who prophesied. Listen to that. Philip the evangelist had four virgin daughters who prophesied. Now these young girls were used in the simple gift of prophecy. They were not prophets. That's why he says he had four virgin daughters who prophesied, not who were prophets. So these young girls were used in the gift of prophecy, the simple gift of prophecy. 1 Corinthians 14, desire spiritual gifts, but especially that you might prophesy. Simple gift of prophecy. For he that prophesies is greater than he that speaks with tongues. Meaning that he that is used in the simple gift of prophecy would help build the church better than he who just speaks in private tongues. Are you seeing that? 
Because to prophesy means to bubble forth, to flow forth, to tumble forth. And when this gift of prophecy begins to operate in our church, guess what? People will become encouraged. People will be exhorted and people will be comforted because these are the three things that happen when the simple gift of prophecy flows. God can use every born again believer at the river to operate in the simple gift of prophecy. But not everyone at the river will be a prophet. Look at verse 10. And as we stayed many days in the house of Philip the Evangelist, a certain prophet the girls were used in prophecy, simple gift of prophecy. But here in verse 10 speaks about the prophet, the ministry of the prophet, the fivefold, one of the fivefold ministry gifts in Ephesians chapter 4. As we stayed many days, a certain prophet named Agabus came down from Judea. When he had come to us, he took Paul's belt, word of knowledge. Watch this now. That's why I told you in the ministry of a prophet, you will see that two out of the three revelation gifts will constantly operate, plus the gift of prophecy, which is a vocal gift, right? Watch this. He took Paul's belt, the gift of word of knowledge. He had to take not the belt of Barnabas, not the belt of Luke, the writer of the book of Acts, because Luke was one of Paul's uh, companions, not the belt of anyone else, but the belt of Paul. He took Paul's belt by the Spirit of God, the word of knowledge, bound his hands and feet and said, Thus says the Holy Ghost. Now he's prophesying. But, <laughs> are you seeing what I'm saying? Thus says the Holy Spirit, So shall the Jews at Jerusalem bind the man who owns this belt and deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. So what do we see here? We see three things. We see the gift of the word of knowledge. He knew who had the belt, the owner of the belt, Paul. He knew it was Paul's, right? That's gift of the word of knowledge. And he said, thus said the Lord, this is what's going to happen. And he begins to also operate in the gift of the word of wisdom. But he had to vocalize it, which is prophecy. Are you seeing that? So two of the revelation gifts plus prophecy. So this man was operating in the gift of the word of knowledge, in the gift of the word of wisdom, and in the gift of prophecy at the same time. <laughs> so he was warning, this is what's going to happen. I'll tell you a quick story. Let me see how many stories I can tell you today. <laughs> it's almost one o'clock. Well, let me tell you a story. Many, many years ago, years ago, I woke up one morning with a dream. But here is what happened in the dream. In the dream, I saw myself in Taksim Square. And about 100 meters from where I stood in Taksim Square, I saw a man. I don't want to go into all the details because it didn't really play out well. But I'll tell you. I'll tell you as much as you, you need to know. I saw a man 100 meters from me. At the time... I saw this dream. The man was not in Turkey. The man was in, in Africa. I won't mention the name. <laughs> the man was in Africa. In a particular country in Africa. So I saw this man. And the Holy Ghost said. He is planning to return to Turkey. If he returns back to Turkey. He will go to prison. Oh. That's what the Holy Ghost told me. Listen to what the Holy Ghost said. He is planning to return back to Turkey. Gift of the word of knowledge. Because it was his plan at the time. If he comes back, he will go to prison. Gift of the word of wisdom. To tell what's going to happen. Why did God show that to me? So that he would deliver him from what was about to happen to him. God did not want him to go to prison. So God sent a message ahead. To say, hey. Don't do this. If you do this, this is what's going to happen. Just like Agabus said, if you go to Jerusalem, they're going to tie your hands and feet, and this is what's going to happen to you. And if you read the whole account of the life of Paul, he did go to Jerusalem, and what Agabus said came to pass. But that's not to say Paul was not in the will of God. It was. Paul was in the will of God. But, but listen to my story. So, I wake up that morning, and I told my wife, I said, this is the dream I just had. 
It was my day off, so I was sitting at home and my wife prepared breakfast. I, I finished eating breakfast. At around 11 a.m., if, if I'm not, if I remember vividly, my phone rang. <laughs> Guess who called me? The guy from Nigeria. I've just mentioned the place. The guy from Nigeria called me and said, Pastor. Uh, I said, yeah. Uh, so he, he, he just started talking about stuff. about, And then he said, I, I want to come back. Oh, and then I remembered. I said, hey, I just had a dream about you this morning. The Lord said, don't come back. If you do, you go to prison. Oh. I told him. Cut a long story short. He ignored the warning. <coughs> came back. And about a year later, he was in prison. He was in prison for something that wasn't good. Do you want to hear one more? <laughs> Many years ago, I was a Bible school student when this one happened. I was not in full-time ministry. I was a Bible school student. There are many ways that God will reveal things to you. Word of knowledge, word of wisdom. One of the ways is through dreams. Another way is through a vision. There's even an open vision. An open vision where you think you are. Where you think that you are sleeping, <laughs> but you're not sleeping. It's happening. Life and direct. But I'll talk about that when we begin to talk about uh, descending of spirits. To see into the realm of the spirit and to see the spirit that's behind the situation. But anyways, <coughs> I went to bed. I had a dream. And in my dream, see, see what I saw. A, a young lady and a young guy. The, young, the guy went to the, gir the girl and said, why did you get rid of the baby without telling me? It was a dream, by the way. Why did you abort the pregnancy without telling me? And I wake up. <laughs> I told my roommate. I said, hey, bro, this is the dream I had this morning. I saw her, this guy asking this girl why she got rid of the baby without telling him. So I visited them. I went and met with the girl. I said, hey, this is what I saw. Um... And it was about three, four months later, I was at a place in a church here in the city. And she came and literally just, literally just fell on me, weeping, fell on me weeping. I said, what's going on? And she began to tell me the whole story. And, uh, and I said, what happened? She said, yes, I got pregnant. And I got rid of the baby. So the Lord used me and helped both of them, restored both of them in their faith. Because they were not married at the time. And they never got married, by the way. But today they are married, you know. Today they are married. I've been privileged to see them. When I was in uh, London some years ago, I went to see her. Visited her in a house with her husband and children. You know, and the guy also, on the other hand, is married with several children too. You know, so why did God show that? Well, God didn't want them to go through that trouble. God wanted to rescue them from it. But if they had listened, they wouldn't have gone through that. What was that? That was the gift of the word of wisdom. The gift of the word of wisdom. Because when I saw it, she was not pregnant. But the Lord was saying she's going to be pregnant. And she's going to abort that baby. So go and warn her. Go and talk to them. So that this evil does not happen. But it did happen. Because when I went, she listened with this ear, but it came out the other one. These things happen that God might rescue his people. He will deliver you from the snare of the fowler. How does he deliver you from the snare of the fowler? Psalm number 91. He will open your spiritual eyes to see what is about to happen. So that you don't fall into that pit that the enemy has dug for you. Praise the Lord. Anybody getting blessed today? So that's the gift of the word of wisdom right there. I will finish with that. 
Next week, I'll talk to you about discerning of spirits. When we get to that, we'll talk about uh, that. I'll show you scriptures about that. But I want you to understand that this is not a gift for a select few. Because of time, I'm not able to tell you story after story, but there are stories that I can tell you. So don't look at me and see, think to yourself, oh, God shows him stuff. God wants to show all of us. God wants to use all of us. The Bible says that these gifts manifest as the spirit wills. These things don't manifest in my life because, or as I will, they manifest as he, the spirit of God, wills. See, you just have to be hungry for this. Say, Lord, use me. Lord, use me. I want you to use me. And I want you to use me to help people. God does not show these things so that we, we run around and criticize and judge and post things on Facebook about people. No, no, no. And I, I'm sure the reason why the gift is limited in so many places is because people are not spiritually mature enough to handle the information that God wants to show them. And if you are not spiritually mature enough to handle the information, why will God show you? I believe with all of my heart that this is the main reason. And it is a major lack of love. Major lack of love because you see, when God shows you secret things about people, what will you do? Judge, criticize, run your mouth. Is that what you're going to do? That's not what God wants you to do. God wants you to love. And until we until people rise up to this place of operating in the love of God tirelessly, the revelation gives will not work. That's why when you read the book of 1 Corinthians, let, let, let's look at 1 Corinthians. Go to chapter 12 in closing. First Corinthians chapter 12, look at verse, look at verse 20, let's see, verse 20, look at verse 28. And God has appointed these in the church, first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, administrations, varieties of tongues. Look at verse 29. Are all apostles? The answer is no. Are all prophets? The answer is no. Are all teachers? The answer is no. Are all workers of miracles? The answer is no. Do all have the gifts of healing? The answer is no. Do all speak with tongues? The answer is no. Now, don't mistake this to uh, your private tongues. No, this is a ministry gift. The tongues here, it's a ministry gift. Because notice, it comes under ministry operations. Please, I need you to note that. Because somebody will read that to all speak with tongues. Well, you see, Pastor Godwell, the Bible does not tell everyone to speak in low prata tali va tenable. No, that's not what it's talking about. This is not your private prayer tongue, your prayer language. This is ministry gift of tongues. Okay? Do all interpret... <coughs> story. Excuse me. Do all interpret... <coughs> Do all interpret? Well, the answer is no. But watch verse 31. But earnestly <laughs> desire the best gifts. Now, what's the best gift? Well, I believe the best gift is the one you need at the moment. The one you need to deal with whatever it's going on or whatever you're dealing with. But I like the next line. It says, and yet I show you a more excellent way. Yet, I show you a more excellent way. Now, when this book was written, there was no verses and chapters. It was one whole book. I mean, you don't write letters to your friends or family, breaking those letters down into chapters and letters and verses. So this was a letter written by Paul to the church at Corinth. So there were no chapters, no letters, no verses. I mean, no chapters and verses. So it was one letter. So you can get to the end of chapter 12 where it says, I show you a more excellent way. And you continue to chapter 13 
having this in your mind that there are no chapters and verses. So it's a continuation. So we finish reading chapter, uh, the last verse in chapter 12, and we continue. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but not have love. So when he says, I'll show you a more excellent way, love is the more excellent way. I have become sounding brass or clean, clanging symbol. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries, gift of word of knowledge, gift of word of wisdom, and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, the gift of faith, you might say, so that I could remove mountains, but I have not love, I am nothing. Are you seeing that? So what I'm saying in essence is all the gifts of the Spirit will have to operate by love. Especially the gift of the word of knowledge, the gift of the word of wisdom. Must, you must operate in love of God or else you're not going to have it. You're not going to operate in them. Because God does not want you judging people, running people to the ground, uh, criticizing people. Oh, look at them. They call themselves this. Oh, look at him. Look at her. Look, look, look at what they do. I think they are Bible school students. Look at them. Look at them. Many years ago, somebody walked up to me. He just joined the Bible school. And he said to me, Pastor Godwill. <clears throat> I said, yes. He said, uh, I don't think I want to continue with, uh, with the Bible school. I said, why? He said, because of what I hear about the students outside. Uh, I hear that the students, but he didn't tell me details of what he heard the students were doing. But he said, because of what the students are doing, I don't think I want to continue with the Bible school. The Bible school is not the problem. If a student was messing up, how, why do you blame the school? That was how he left the church, left the Bible school. But you see, that's a judgmental spirit. How can God reveal secrets of those people to you? Because you're already judging them just by knowing what they, you must have heard they did. So people like that at the time do not qualify to even know these things about people. Why? Because if they do, they're going to judge. They're going to condemn. If you're quitting Bible school, because of some people you heard were doing stuff, why don't you just go to them in love and say, brother, sister, uh, you know, this is not consistent with our faith. I love you, man. I, I'm not here to judge you. I'm just, I'm here to help you. Please, please, please. This is wrong. If you want help, I can go with you, man. I can go with you to pastor. And, and I can even help you if you want me to help you. But maybe I'm not in a position to help you, but pastor can't. Can we go to him? But this is not right. You say it in love. Not judging, not condemning, not making people feel like they are trash. And you are super spiritual. You are the best thing since sliced bread. No, you are not. No, you are not. Judge not so that you are not judged. Condemn not so that you are not condemned. Some people are so quick to judge and condemn people. That is why the gifts of the Spirit is lacking in their lives. How can God show you stuff about people when you, you don't even... The mo some people, the moment they hear about your failure, your mistakes, they, they change their perspective about you. By the grace of God, by the grace of God. I've, I mean, I've heard stuff. I've seen, I've heard stuff about people. That's one of the things I learned from Pastor Corey. <clears throat> Pastor Corey, amazing, amazing man of grace. Oh, my God. Amazing. People look at Pastor Corey and say, I can't, I, I, it's hard to approach him. You approach Pastor Corey with the most difficult thing in your life, he will overwhelm you with love. You will be shocked. What? People have come into the office to talk to him, and it was hard for them to even come. But when they did, they walked out with, oh, I didn't know he was going to deal with me that way. He, they were blown away by grace. We're not here to judge you and put you down. No, we're here to help you. Why are we in the ministry if we can't help people struggling? Why? No, that's not the way it is for some people. Oh, we, you have to judge them. You have to kill them. You have to throw stones at them. That's a, that's a Pharise, Pharisaic spirit. That spirit of Pharisees. We don't want it at the river. 